I'm Sin. Welcome to Quilter's Cottage. I'm going to give you a demo today on how to make our row by rows. I have two rows at the shop. One is our trailer row and it's applique. That's what we're going to be doing right now. And I have a second row and it's a piece row and it's a log cabin. And it's up front. We're going to do that in a separate video. So look for that one. This is our three trailers, and they're all applique. They have uh, trees. You can arrange it however you would like. This is how we did it. We have some little embellishments. We have some buttons, and we put crystals, give it a little bling. We've got some beads as the door handles, and uh, that those do not come in the kit. Uh, they will be whatever you wanted to do to them. So let me show you how I approached this because it's lots of pieces. This is the pattern that you will get. This is a free pattern um, if you come into the shop. We also have kits available and this is the fabrics that you will get in the kits. Um, when you get the pattern, it's going to have simple instructions on you will pick any applique method that you want. We picked raw edge. You can certainly needle turn this. You have enough fabric. You can do starch method. Um, but we chose the um, raw edge applique. And you will take this. It's double sided printed. Save your pattern and print this. I recommend just taking this and printing it, copying it onto um, cardstock. So you take your pattern and take your four applique pieces and copy them onto a thicker cardstock. And we did that here. So you have your four, four pieces. You're going to cut these out and just use your paper scissors and you will cut along and cut all of these out. So you will sit and cut, cut, cut all your pieces out. So I have a couple cut out and they're a little bit stiffer. This, these down here are just paper, um, but these are cardstock and you can see why I recommend that. So we'll talk about that in just a second. So once you cut out all of these pieces, and it is a lot of pieces, I know, but they're pretty simple. They're simplified pieces. And once you cut them all out, organize them into, like here's all the pieces for trailer A. Here's all the pieces, windows and doors for trailer B. Here's trailer C. Here's the uh, grass and the landscape. Here's tree one, tree two, tree three, tree four, and tree five. And then here's your little hitch. You got two, two places you're gonna use your little hitch. And of course your little flowers or shrubs, whatever you want to make out of them. <clears throat> Once you have these and you, you're going to, now you have all your pattern pieces together. Now you're gonna get to prepare your fabric. So we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you how I prepare my fabric. Okay, now we're going to prepare our fabric. So these are the pieces that are already cut uh, in your kit. Plus you have your background piece. So you're going to take, I use just Wonder Under, okay? And this is your Wonder Under. And you need about a yard and a half max of this. And the way that I do this to, you know, to keep the glue from getting everywhere, plus to, to be efficient with your Wonder Under, you can use any double-sided fusible. You can use a uh, heat and bond or uh, soft fuse, any, any of those double fuse. Um, sometimes I even lay a piece of uh, muslin on my ironing board just any time that I'm messing with the double fuse to keep it from getting on my nice pretty ironing board. But I didn't do that today because I'm not actually going to iron this. Then I take, uh, arrange them so they're very condensed. You don't have really any uh, glue showing 
or the sticky part of the paper. Sometimes I would even go through here now that I have it arranged and trim away this so I don't get so much of it on. Then I take my applique sheet and I lay it on and then I'm just going to iron it. And I'm going to heat set this on here until it's st st stuck to the Wonder Under. And I'll continue down and do this whole, whole thing. And then a lot of times I take my applique sheet and lay it on my ironing board, turn this over and iron the other side so it fuses really good. So once you have all of that fused, then I come in here with my paper scissors and I will cut, rough cut each one of these apart so that you have each individual piece. So that's how you're going to prepare that. It only takes really a few minutes. Okay, now that you have taken and prepared all your applique pieces and you'll have them all cut apart like this into each individual colors, um, the whole stack. Then you'll take your background piece and we gave you a little bit bigger piece so you could square it up. You're going to cut this piece to nine and a half by 36 and a half so that it meets the requirements of your row. Uh, so once you've done that, that's your whole background piece. That's what you're going to be applying all of your applique pieces to. So prepare that and then you'll be finished with that piece. Now to take all of these pieces that you have cut and put your double fuse on and it has paper on this side. So you have your pieces and let me just clear some of this out of the way so that we can. <clears throat> You'll take each of your, of your um, pieces And you'll determine which, <clears throat> which fabric you want to use. You can follow mine or you can use whatever piece you want to use for whichever green you want your, your trees to be. So the best way, a lot of, applique, a lot of raw edge applique is um, going to tell you we've reversed it, we have not reversed it, and it, sometimes that's a little bit confusing. The best way that I approach raw edge applique is I take my piece, my pattern piece, the right side up that has the writing on it. I lay it on the right side of my fabric so I know that this is going to be the right side. Then I just simply take it and put it straight under it, turn it over, and I'm ready to trace it. So now you, and with the cardstock, you have a little bit of a ledge to make it easier to trace. So you're going to trace it, and sometimes I'll even write, this is tree three. So I know this is a tree piece, so I just put a three on it because I know that that's my third tree leaves. So you're going to do that to each piece, like you would take you know, the next one and put, just put a number. If you need to write what it is on it, you can just write on this because this paper is going away. So once you have all of your pieces traced, then you have them all separate. Okay, so you can stick them in a little Ziploc bag or whatever and, you know, cut them out while you're watching TV or or while you're waiting to pick the kids up from school or, or wherever it's convenient to cut. So once you've, you've traced all of these on here, then you're going to, um, I usually take a nice pair of uh, scissors that I can get a nice clean cut with. I like the little Ginger 4 inch. And I come in here and I, I will cut each one of these each one of these out and you get a really nice clean line um, with a really nice sharp pair of scissors. You want to get down in your points 
get your curves nice and smooth because if you're if they're not smooth then it's not going to be smooth on your on your quilt because you're not turning this edge under so you want to make sure that it's really like like you want it to be so once you have all of your pieces cut out then um, I would just rough arrange it on your background and we're just going to use a miniature a miniature piece here but you're going to arrange all your stuff on your background and get it to where you like for it to be and then each piece you're going to pick up and how I get this some people say I can't get this paper off the back and when you start picking at the edges sometimes that edge starts getting ravelly but you'll take a pen and score it and now you can take your paper off really easily <clears throat> and now you have a fusible on the up uh, on the other side and you'll take all your pieces off of your whole your whole piece and then you you'll rearrange them get them exactly where you want them to be and I usually do this over on the big ironing board okay so when you're arranging this lay your background down and take all your papers off <clears throat> so that you can just press the whole thing and you don't want to press it where you move it you want to you don't want to iron it you don't want to scoot it because you're going to scoot your pieces you want to just press each one across your row just like this and then it's going to stay exactly where you want it to be so just get them lightly put on there all the way across and then you can come back and hold it for a few seconds whatever your instructions on your double fuse says sometimes it's 10 seconds sometimes it's three seconds so once you have it all fused you'll have your whole piece fused and i'm just going to really lightly show you here um, how I do the raw edge applique. I use my open toe foot and I also use my clear one. I have one that's uh, all stainless and you cannot see when you're top stitching as well as this nice clear foot. So if you have this foot, this is a great foot for doing the, oh, for doing the applique. So I'm sewing with a Janome 3160 and um, I'm using a number 17 stitch. It's a little buttonhole or a um, blanket stitch, some people call it. And I just, which the secret to this is to start it in an inconspicuous spot. Like you wouldn't want to start it on the center of the because then when you come around, it's really going to show. You're going to want to start down in a gully or maybe in a point uh, where it's not as visible. Um, this stitch on this machine stitches twice. So before you pivot and use your needle down, before you pivot, you want to... Um, make sure it's completed the sequence of stitch then when it's finished with that and is ready to do the second stitch that's when you pivot so i'm just going to show you very very slightly how to do that i'm going to start and it see how it's going twice and now it's repeating into the second stitch and it for it advances now i'm doing my third stitch and that is when I want to pivot a little bit to go right along that edge. Go slow and steady. Slow and steady and you'll get a really pretty stitch. And I just pivot a little bit. If you have a knee lift on your machine, boy, this really comes in handy at this, at this point in doing this. So pay attention to your sequence of your stitching. You can do a satin stitch, you can do a zigzag stitch, you can do an a invisible thread if you don't want to match all this thread and have all the thread changing. 
uh, I like the look of the thread changing on uh, raw edge applique. I use, on this quilt row, I've used Floriani. It has a little shimmer to it, and I like that. Uh, Aurifil is really great if you don't want that shimmer. It's a nice top stitch uh, thread. And you can see, you can see how pretty that stitch looks on there. <clears throat> and you will just continue around. Now my suggestion with this, and we're gonna look up here at the, um, we're gonna look up here at the, at the quilt. When you're, when you're doing your raw edge applique, you wanna work from the back forward. So I would come in here and I would do this, this leaves first because it's further back. Then I would do these leaves. Then I would do the tree trunk. So you're gonna look at each one of these and say which one is the back because you would wanna do this trailer part before you do the wheels. Or you wanna do that trailer part before you do the, the tent part of this. So you're going to look at that and do that whole same thing all the way around. Uh, pick whatever thread you can use, um, you know, whatever kind of colors you want to use on this. Uh, the only other thing is these got real little right in here and right in here and I didn't want to make more pieces and in here. So what I did was I used, and I, I didn't bring them uh, up here to the shop, and I apologize, but I'll put a picture of them on the web page. I used a tulip fabric marker. And on one side, it's a real sharp point. On the other side, it looks like a brush. Oh, and man, they work really nicely. So what I did is I came in here and just drew in uh, curtains and colored them with that marker. I did the same thing over here. I just made little shades to make them different, added a little pull string, and I just colored it with that marker. Here, I came in and all I did was take the black and use the sharp point side and just drew the mesh to make it look like a mesh uh, tent. And I used uh, little beads for the doors and I just uh, put little buttons on top of the polka dot wheels. I put crystals. I use Schwarzky crystals and they're heat, uh, heat fix. So they will not, they'll be able to be